Welcome to my series of videos on environmental engineering. In this video, we'll be discussing about fundamentals of air pollution dispersion modeling. I am Dr. T. Srinivas, working as professor in the Department of Civil Engineering, Githam University. First of all, what is air pollution? If you are living in a city, smoke coming from automobiles or if you are living in an industrial area thick smoke coming from or exhaust you may think that they are polluting the air there are different sources they may be natural or they may be man-made once these pollutants are emitted into the atmosphere they get diluted they mix thoroughly with the surrounding air and they diluted by the term called atmospheric dispersion. So what is dispersion? Dispersion is nothing but spreading of pollutants from a source. As they occupy larger and larger volumes of air, they get diluted. When a pollutant is released from a stack, there are three factors which are responsible for the dispersion. One is the wind. That is nothing but because of the advection, the pollutant is carried away along the direction of the wind. And secondly, because of the turbulence, because of the diffusion, there is a cross difference in the concentrations. And third one is gravity deposition. Why we require this air pollution modeling. To find the ground level concentrations for a given source at different points and to compare these with the standards that is whether they are in the limits or not. And secondly to estimate the public health risks associated with the emission of toxic chemicals and hazardous substances that is we can calculate the distance up to which the people are at risk. And not only that, to estimate the efficiency of controlling equipment and to plan for reduction measures. For any model, we require source parameters, meteorological parameters and receptor parameters. That is source parameters like source emission rate, stack height, temperature, stack exit velocity and the diameter of the stack. Coming to the meteorological parameters, we require the wind velocity, ambient temperature and the stability class. We will discuss about how the stability class varies with the temperature and with the altitude. And not only that, the third parameter is the receptor, the receptor elevation, distance from the uh, source and the direction with respect to the source. So here as far as the air pollution is concerned there are two sources. One is a continuous source that is coming from a stack and second is puff that is nothing but an instantaneous release into the atmosphere and in this case after a time interval of t the source becomes zero but in case of plume it is a continuous source. As far as this, we are following Gaussian distribution and we are following a coordinate system. That means along the direction of the wind, it is x direction. And if you assume that this is the center line of the plume, away from the center line, that is y, and the vertical direction as z. So in this, if you consider small h as a physical stack height there is a small plume rise that is designated by delta h so physical stack height and the plume rise gives rise to the effective stack height in detail we'll discuss about how to calculate the plume rise and as far as the gaussian plume model is concerned that is firstly we are concentrating along the direction of the wind as x and if you assume that this is the center line away from the center line this is y and the vertical distance as z 
so this is nothing but the physical stack height and this is the plume rise so gives rise to the effective stack height if you consider the concentrations it follows a gaussian distribution that is at the peak at the center and gradually it tapers off so how to calculate the concentrations so gaussian plume model that is concentration it is it can be calculated by using this formula in this q is nothing but the source emission rate that is the pollutant how the pollutant is discharged how many grams per second it is discharged into the atmosphere u is nothing but the wind speed at the source x y z and h are nothing but the coordinates and sigma y and sigma z are nothing but the dispersion coefficients in y and z direction we'll discuss about how to calculate this sigma y and sigma z see our interest is how the concentration ground level concentration is varying so if you if you are talking about the ground level concentration that means z is equal to 0 so if you substitute z is equal to 0 this is the equation for calculating ground level concentration now there is a small correction factor even for the wind wind velocity also changes with altitude usually the wind velocity is measured at 10 meters height that is all the meteorological parameters will measure at 10 meters height so if you know the wind velocity at a particular distance z1 you can calculate for example u2 is nothing but your stack height you can calculate z2 is nothing but your stack height you can calculate the velocity at the stack height by using the formula u2 by u1 is equal to z2 by z2 z1 whole to the power of p p is nothing but the empirical constant depends on whether it is rural or urban etc so this correction factor we can use it to find out the exact wind speed at the stack exit there is a term called environmental lapse rate that is the temperature is decreasing with the altitude so that is nothing but the environmental lapse rate usually it is found that 6.5 degree centigrade decrease of temperature for every 1000 meters so when a parcel of air is released into the atmosphere because of the decrease in the pressure because of the temperature because of the expansion it goes adiabatic expansion and it also reduces the temperature that is called adiabatic lapse rate so when you compare this environmental lapse rate and adiabatic lapse rate we can classify the atmosphere into different stability conditions for example when environmental lapse rate is greater than adiabatic lapse rate what do you mean by that when it is environmental lapse rate is greater than the dry adiabatic lapse rate that is the atmosphere is cooling faster than a partial fire so a partial fire is cooling it is more warmer than the surrounding and less dense as a result it becomes more buoyant and it tends to continue in the upward direction so that stability condition is called unstable condition this is when the environmental lapse rate is greater than the so adiabatic lapse rate the condition it is called super adiabatic and the climatic condition it is designated as unstable and there is another term when it is on the negative side that is when the environmental lapse rate is less than the dry adiabatic lapse rate that is a partial of air coming from a stack it becomes cooler and more dense than the surroundings as a result what will happen it falls down to the ground it falls down to the original position as a result the atmospheric condition it is said to be stable when environmental lapse rate and the adiabatic lapse rate when both are same then we will call the neutral condition but that means there is no much influence of the temperature on the climatic condition so pascal and gifford they have classified based on the temperature based on the solar radiation they have classified the climate conditions into extremely unstable moderately unstable slightly unstable neutral slightly stable and moderately stable condition 
so these ready made pascal and gifford curves are available so we'll edit we'll find out how to calculate the dispersion coefficients sigma y and sigma z see for example if my distance is let us say 2 kilometers so correspondingly if i am choosing any climatic condition so i can calculate i can read the sigma y value similarly i can calculate i can read the sigma z value from this ready made curves so based on the climatic conditions the plumes they behave in different ways that is coning looping fanning fumigation etc in another video we'll discuss about how this plume behaves with respect to the lapse rate so this is a formula for calculating the stack height it depends on the stack exit velocity diameter of the stack wind velocity atmospheric pressure stack exit temperature and the ambient temperature this is called holland formula so we'll calculate the delta h and we know the physical stack height then we'll calculate the effective stack height then we'll correct the velocity at the source then suitable climatic condition we'll choose depending on that we'll calculate sigma y and sigma z then all these are the input parameters to calculate the ground oil concentration coming to the second part of the model that is gaussian puff model as we have already mentioned that puff means it is nothing but an instantaneous release into the atmosphere that is after a particular interval of time t the source becomes zero so in this how much mass of pollutant is injected into the atmosphere so many grams and sigma x sigma y and sigma z are the dispersion coefficients u is nothing but the wind velocity so here we can calculate the ground oil concentrations if you are following a gaussian puff model thank you for watching my video and in next video we'll be discussing about in detail about the climatic conditions and depending on the climatic conditions how the atmosphere is changing and based on that how the plumes are